and welcome to Eco Girl in a Modern World. My name is Shelley and my channel is dedicated to talking about ways to be environmentally friendly in a modern context. Uh, since it is still January, I wanted to go ahead and do a video that I've been meaning to do for a while and uh, that is uh, shipping and packaging. Um, I'm going to focus mostly on packaging materials today, um, even though there's going to be a few touch points where I talk about the reason why we ship a lot of stuff, and that is a de definitely a big source of pollution and things like that. But uh, to go ahead and get started, it is a new year, and with it, whenever it's a new year, it's like new year, new you, <laughs> and we're a couple weeks in. Um, you know, we're, the, we're almost into the second month of the year, but um, I've noticed that you know after the holidays and especially in that first month of January, um, a lot of purchasing goes on, and you probably, if you've seen my videos from back in November, I've been trying to be no buy. I've been trying to be better about my spending habits, but um, but this time of year especially, there tends to be a lot of movement with uh, the return of things um, and the purchasing of things. So uh, to, to, to jump right in, um, I'm gonna start with a little backstory on you know the way that marketing works. Um, to be honest, we talk a lot on this channel about carbon emissions and things like that. And the way that things are produced especially with fashion, with anything that you can buy. Um, it's, it's very carbon intensive. We're pulling materials to make the product and then we are shipping the product all over the place. Um, that especially holds true for clothing. Uh, you see a lot on this channel polyester. Polyester is made of plastics, so we are using a lot of finite materials that we don't have much of to create kind of cheap plastic junk. And um, I'll even post a few videos. It seems like things that are produced today are not as high a quality as they used to be produced in the past because we produce it so quickly. Uh, we, we make it with cheap materials and those materials are becoming harder and harder to find. Just because you don't spend a lot of money on it does not mean that we're not kind of mining and pulling thing, resources that we really shouldn't be to make something kind of frivolous. Uh, as, as consumers, we tend to buy little trinket stuff or things that are not very functional, and then we have it shipped all over the place. So, you know, today we're going to focus more on the actual packaging of said items. But the reason that I kind of go into it, especially the reason I'm talking about this topic, and especially this time of year, is that, um, you know, again, a lot of returns occur after the holidays. Um, also in January, it's, you know, post holidays, a lot of people uh, want to get cozy in their homes. So sometimes, you, you know, that means buying things for your, you know, you know, buying new bedding or buying new clothing, or it's just a type of, it's a time of year when, when going in indoors to keep warm and to stay out of the gray weather, um, you know, shopping is a dopamine hit in the brain. And um, so it, we tend to buy a lot of things and it's really not good how, how much of an online shopping culture we've become. Um, I'm going to post a few videos below. Um, now again, you know, the pandemic played into it, you know, when you cannot leave the house, you order things. But to be honest, even before the pandemic, we were, you know, uh, consumers, we were going in a direction of buying way too much online. And honestly, you see online the sales al algorithm, you know, social media, they they collect, you know, they collect data on your shopping habits, on your, your age, your, your criteria, and they know how to market to you. So, you know, and I've, I've, you've seen in other videos that I've posted here on that channel, the moment that you can just scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll, and it seems like you can scroll on forever and you never reach the end of the, you know, the thread of, of things that you can buy. The other thing is when you're looking for a pair of pants that are in this color, you know, the pictures, first off, they're gonna offer it to you in 12 different shades of colors and all of it's gonna be polyester and half the time, you know, they're gonna put the prettiest looking model on the picture and a lot of times those pictures, especially if you're buying from the 
the really, really uh, nasty type of marketing like you know like Timu or Shein or anything like that most of the time those those um, images are really horribly altered to make it look like it's this wonderful product so you know we really are in a bad kind of we're going in a very bad direction where we're we're over producing things that don't need to be in creation in the first place they're not really quality items to begin with and then it's costing us money to ship it overseas. It's carbon in the air. It's costing us money to store it when it can't be, you know, housed somewhere. And then it is costing us money when we can't resell it or refurbish it. And I'm actually going to post a few videos below the, 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 the detriment. It's, it's really quite scary, guys. When you buy things online, uh, you know, the the liquidation market has become an animal in itself and what liquidation market means is that in in 2021 there were there was an excess of 6.1 billion billion returns of items bought online and again you know 2021 the year after the pandemic really got big and, and honestly, 10% of those returns were fraudulent. It was just someone saying that they couldn't use the item and really they were just trying to perpetrate fraud. The other thing is that all of that carbon in the air, the, the, the mailing of the item to you and then the returning of it back is carbon in the air. And then um, a few other statistics that you'll see down below is that, you know, when you return something, um, it, it can't always be resold. And some of these online sellers and even the bigger ones like Amazon is really coming under fire and you can look at the video to see how that when they get something back there, they don't really want to waste a whole lot of time and trying to refurbish it or checking it to see if it's resellable. They'll usually just dispose of it or find another way where they're not liable for the way that they get rid of it. And um, one of the ways that, that in the video, it was very interesting uh, in the video down below, it talked a lot about how, you know, they try to skirt the line of responsibility. They'll say, oh yeah, we took care of the return. We didn't, we didn't burn it, we didn't incinerate it, but we ethically disposed of it. And there's certain terms with the EPA of how you dispose of something. And one of the ways you can dispose of something is incineration. And incineration is not good, guys. You're burning, you know, just like you see in my furniture video and other videos. That's that's how that's on, honestly how third world countries handle our first world trash. Is they'll just burn a pile of clothes that you know they'll buy a a, a pile of Forever Twenty One clothes that got thrown into a trash bin or a recycle bin, and it's full. All of those clothes are made of polyester, made of materials that are very carcinogenic. They're not meant to be burned. They put fumes in the in the, the atmosphere, and they also burn holes in the in the ozone. So burning is not good, but um, you'll see in the videos below, I won't go into too much detail, but half the reason that, that prices for things, we talk so much about inflation, is because of returns. Um, so it's, you know, before we even get into packaging, the returns is a very, very bad loop. Um, you know, the reason that you'll pay $7 for a sticker, you know, you've seen those little stickers that you put on your car or put on your, 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 you know, your uh, aluminum tumbler for your water. Um, there'll be like some astronomical amount, like $8. The reason why a sticker costs that much is because a good percentage of the time if it's returned, Anything that you return, it costs the maker 66% to put it back into the market and sometimes it cannot be resold after it's used. So the liquida liquidation market is becoming a huge deal and it's becoming a bigger deal in the last five years. But the biggest, the biggest rule in the first place is try not to buy something online. I don't like buying online. I, you know, and if I have to buy online, I look very close at the measurements. I look at what the materials are made of, you know, if it's clothes, if it's a pair of pants, look at the inseam, look at the, you know, the, the drop waist, look at the waist measurements, really scrutinize all that. And if any of it looks vague, don't buy from that seller. 
The other thing is Amazon has become a real, has become the 800 million pound gorilla on the corner and they're not being really responsible for the way they dispose of things. And if, if things are going into landfills and guys, you'll see in the videos, there's statistics about things, you know, returns going into landfills that are billions of tons of, of metric that there are, mil there are billions of tons of trash that's just getting thrown away and all it is is just stuff that we've returned that we didn't want. So buying online or this, this, this convenience of just let it be mailed to me is not, is, is crippling the planet. Now, when you do have to have something mailed to you, because again, you know, in, in events like pandemics or not being able to find what you need at your regular brick and mortar store, you are gonna run into the necessity of having to mail things in packaging. And, um, and you know, it's funny, you know, I'm, I'm a big advocate of eBay. I like eBay and it's funny, I get a lot of stuff in the mail. And the interesting thing about it is that I feel like some of the packaging has gotten better in some ways, but then it's gotten way worse than others. Uh, the first thing is with Amazon packaging, the, the Amazon has committed to being more, um, to being uh, completely recyclable packaging, I think by 2024, 2025. And what they've done is they've switched mostly to cardboard. Um, they also, and this is a good thing, I've seen them uh, move more to the paper mailers um, where, you know, when you rip open the mailer, everything is, um, is recyclable. And I do like that. That's, that is go a, a, in, the, in the right direction um, because what you see, the, um, you know, paper mailers are much better than using those plastic bubble mailers, uh, the ones that have kind of paper on the outside but then plastic bubble on the inside. And um, you get a lot of these, and I'll talk about these more in a minute. This is like a big problem, you know, the ones that, you know, have plastic here, but then just a thin piece of paper on the outside. That's very hard to recycle. But the the paper mailers that they started to use is a, is a step in the right direction. Now, of course, still a lot of carbon mailing things all around the world, but at least they're packaging it a little bit better there. Um, the other thing that you can do that's more eco-friendly that I've seen is utilize a good box or about you know the 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 benefits of a good box and I'm, I'm sometimes kind of bad with this if I get a, like a nice box I don't want to let it go you know but a lot of times if something is mailed in a box then you can always reuse it now the disadvantages of boxes is that paper and cardboard it's very carbon intensive to make and I'll, I'll post a few videos down below, but you know, creating cardboard, it's, it's a lot of carbon. And you don't wanna just use the box once and then recycle it because that's not a real good use of energy. It takes a lot of energy to create that box and then you're only using it once and then it's taking a lot of energy to recycle that box. And you know, just like plastic, paper's a lot more recyclable than plastic is, but then, you know, it's not always 100%. We try, we strive with paper, you can make it 100% recycled paper, but um, cardboard is very carbon intensive. So best thing is try to use the box as much as you can, and that's always a good thing. The other thing that is great is that sometimes you get a really pretty box and you know, and I'll show you a picture. My mom actually sent me a gift set of lavender and it came in the prettiest box. Like it had, it had like a ribbon handle to it. It opens up and, and I'm telling you guys, it's a nice box. So, so here I, I even here, I've got like two of these. I'm honestly using this to store my Easter decorations. So, you know, sometimes a good box and it's, it smells divine, it smells like lavender. So sometimes, you know, if you get, if you get a good box, you n don't necessarily have to turn around and use it to mail things out again. Um, you can always repurpose it as a storage container and that's a great way to extend its life. Now, um, one way, um, one other thing that I've seen is a lot of cardboard mailers. And this is an Amazon one that's actually pretty nice. And the nice thing is, you know, it, it does, you know, it does say please recycle and all of that good stuff. So um, you could always, you know, repurpose this. 
Um, now, one thing that you can do, um, the, the one disadvantage of a lot of mailing that I see, and this is what really upsets me, is that, you know, when I order things from like eBay or, you know, it doesn't even have to be from Amazon, I am causing carbon for it being mailed to me. But a lot of times the, the, the box itself is just taped like crazy with plastic, with the plastic adhesive tape. And that in itself is a lot of waste. You've probably seen it when even, you know, when you're, t I, I, have, I take off all the plastic so I can flatten my cardboard to recycle it. And after I take all that plastic off, it's like this big ball, op you know, using plastic tape is another, you know, it's, it's, you know, as much as we're trying to use cardboard boxes, plastic tape is just making it really difficult because that's just as bad as a plastic mailer. Now, what you can get, and this is an alternative to plastic tape, is that if you are mailing something out, you can get the, um, the craft paper packaging tape. And I got this from Net Zero. And what it is, is it's basically, it is recyclable tape. It's basically where you don't, it's, um, it, it closes up the box without, you know, and then you don't even have to remove this to recycle it. You box flatten the box and this is recyclable along with cardboard. Now the disadvantage that I found, and I don't know if this is just a, a fault with this particular brand, is that um, the adhesive is weird in the way that it sticks. It sticks well to cardboard, but if you have any overlap, like if you try to, you know, if you wrap this t too far, if you wrap this all the way around where it touches itself, it does not stick to itself. So, you know, unlike the plastic stuff that when you wrap completely around, it's going to adhere to itself. The moment this is touching itself, it doesn't stick. The other thing is that the, the, the tape a little, gets a little hit or miss. I have to use kind of an ugly pair of scissors to cut this because when I use my good scissors, it sticks to my sticker, scissors so badly. It's like, it's so weird. The adhesive likes to stick to metal, but it doesn't like to stick to cardboard. So again, I don't know if maybe there's another brand of craft tape out there that's better than this one. I'm just trying to use this up for right now. But this is an alternative if you don't want to have to use the kind of non-recyclable clear plastic packing tape, which unfortunately works really well, but is not recyclable at all. It would be contributing to trash waste. Um, the other thing is if you are reusing a box, the packing materials inside the box is really important. Uh, first off, styrofoam is bad. Styrofoam is that, that, that the packing peanuts. Um, in one of the videos that I posted down below, they actually talk about how they melt styrofoam, but styrofoam has a lot of toxic materials in it, so um, you really don't want to be smelling that. You know, if, 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 if you're exposing any of that to heat, you do not want to be anywhere near it. The other thing is styrofoam is no longer recyclable. It's, uh, recycling centers stopped recycling it a long time ago, probably because of all the toxic chemicals in it, and the problem is, is that they don't make it anymore, but whatever's already in existence is already in existence. And you still see styrofoam, you know, as the casing for a lot of electronics or when you buy new speakers or something like that, you know, uh, a lot of times it's still used in those packing materials. So I don't, the one good thing about styrofoam is if you come, if someone mails you something in styrofoam peanuts, just go ahead and reuse the peanuts and mail them again. Basically, we just want to keep using the, that, that packaging until, you know, because it's not going to biodegrade anytime soon, you probably just want to try to recycle and reuse them. And this actually bridges perfectly into a good thing because, again, if someone mails me a box full of styrofoam peanuts, I, you know, I sell things on, on eBay too, but if I don't get a chance to use those steep styrofoam peanuts, I'm just, you know, I, I'm holding on to them. I, I don't throw them away because they don't biodegrade and they're not recycled anymore. So I could either hold on to them and just wait until I have something to ship out. But the other thing that you can do, and that's a good recycling practice, is call your local packaging store. Like I have a UPS store that's near me. And the, the thing about UPS is 
is that UPS, um, they are the licensed, they're kind of the contracted return um, company for a lot of, um, a lot of uh, internet companies, like cable and internet companies. Um, the cable and internet company, both of them in my area, anytime you need to ship, like anytime you need to ship something back to them, they will go through UPS. And the great thing about UPS is that if you have leftover styrofoam peanuts, also if you have any leftover um, bubble wrap, like if you have bubble peanuts like this and all of this is really clean, um, you can call your UPS store and say, hey, could I bring this into you and could you reuse it? And guys, the, um, the, the, the guy at my UPS store, he's the owner, he does a happy dance when he sees me coming because he loves it when I bring in bubble wrap and styrofoam because he's constantly, he's, he's, he's the um, advocate for a lot of return programs. And if, if I'm donating the packing materials, they don't have to pay for that out of pocket when they're sending things back to, you know, the cable company, if they're package, packing up, you know, an old cable box that they have to. Definitely, if you have something like styrofoam peanuts or extra bubble wrap, you don't have to jump to straight looking to recycle that stuff. You can go ahead and, um, you know, uh, contact your local, first contact your local, um, UPS store and say, hey, I've got some clean bubble wrap. I've got some clean styrofoam. Can I bring it in? Can you use it? And 99% of the time, the answer is going to be yes. And they'll be very grateful because, you know, that's, that's, that's less overhead and it's keeping things in the cycle. It's, you know, it's a way of recycling. You can see is um, there are the, the inflatable bubble wrap, you know, like the, the air bubble type of bubble wrap. Um, you can, if you pop, uh, there's, there's a few ways that you can reuse that. I know a lot of people who like to, um, use those inside of their purses. Like, um, if, it, you know, if you have purses that are of a particular shape and you don't, you don't want to flatten your purse when you're storing it, you can put one of those inflatable bubbles in your purse to help it retain its shape. Um, I like to use crumpled up paper, but other people like to use the bubble. That's up to you. The other thing you can do is if you feel like, okay, I'm not really going to use it, you can pop them, you can deflate the bubble, and you can wrap it up. And most of the time that um, that kind of uh, plastic is number four plastic. And what you can do is you can turn that in. Um, when you go to your grocery store, like I go to my Whole Foods store, they have a plastic bag recycling. And number four plastic is the same as plastic bag recycling. So I think most of the time you can deflate that take it to your grocery store that has that it's usually a blue bin out front that says you know uh, uh, plastic bag recycling and you know I don't use I, I bring my own bag but I usually recycle the, the deflatable now the problem is is that they do not take bubble wrap though so this type of bubble wrap would not be what you'd want to put into that bin but the um, the the air ones that you can deflate and flatten that is going to be more of a plastic that you can put with your handled you know plastic bags when you're recycling. Now one other option is TerraCycle does have a program for it, but the one thing is that TerraCycle, if you look at their list, it's it's first off it's pretty expensive because even their smallest box is pretty big. It's like one of those little bo uh, box for, for, you know. Um, receptacles. It's about $113. And if you look at their list of what they accept, they really only accept bubble wrap like this. Um, they do recept, uh, accept the hard plastic um, uh, uh, tape dispensers, which is good. Um, and they also accept a few other things for that are just your standard packaging materials. Now, um, and they would accept, you know, the, the popped um, inflatables too. Now, one thing I, I, would, I would go with that box if they accepted these type of mailers, because I have 10 million of these type of mailers, which is those, this is those paper covered plastic on the inside. Unfortunately, the moment, it seems like with all recycling, the moment you have two elements to something, if it's more than just the plastic wrap, if it's this on the outside, you can't really recycle it. It's, it's hard to separate, but 
you know, if if um, if it is a mailer like this that has that doesn't have a label with your name on it, because I'm careful about that too. I don't want my name and address out there, um, you know, or the the name and address of the people who have sent me things. Um, so there's a few ways that you can upcycle these. I mean, these these are our biggest problem with packaging materials, I think. Um, first off, you can use it to for for moving things. Like I've noticed that these are excellent for um, you know, especially if you have bigger ones. Um, if you need to put like a picture frame in something, you know, you can. If you need to store things like metals or um, you know, uh, I'm sorry lack of a better thing you if you need to store delicately housed things like maybe jewelry boxes or picture frames that have glass in it um, like awards or anything um, I, I use these a lot when I'm storing um, decorations like I have you know I have little little signs that are like this big for Halloween for Thanksgiving for Christmas um, once you're done with it before you put it back into storage you can use this as a, as a kind of like a, 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 a buffered sleeve to really hold it and protect it while it's in storage. So really that's a good way. Also, if you know anyone who's moving, you know, you as you're packing up your picture frames, you can go ahead and, you know, put them and use them like little buffered sleeves to protect your, your fragile things while you're moving. Um, you know, if, if it's a bigger bubble mailer, I'm sure you could put things like vase or a glass in it or things like that of nice for that and you could just you know put it in a box now the the other part of it is you could I, I could ask I, I am in the process of seeing if, um, if any of our packaging stores could have use of bubble mailers just like we said sometimes there's you know parts that they might you know they might be bailing back cords or things like that where those bubble ma mailers could be reused but the problem is they they tend to get one to two uses and get thrown away so that I think that's a real source of waste is those those paper bubble mailers um, the other thing that really disappointed me, and this is, you know, not to shame Amazon, I know they're trying, but um, Amazon bubble mailers are complete plastic inside and then on the outside. The funny thing is on the outside, it says that it's number four plastic, which you would think would be recyclable, but inside of the little recycling triangle, it says store drop off. And this actually happened to me. Um, Amazon has receiving areas inside of Whole Foods because Amazon old, owns Whole Foods now. So they have a little kiosk where you can return things or pick up things, which is, is nice. You know, it's better to pick up something than to have it delivered with all this packaging that we're talking about. But um, I went in there because I wanted to recycle those mailers. It said store drop off, so I took it in. And I don't know if the person I talked to just was not well versed with the recycling program or not well trained, but I handed it to her. I said, I'm bringing this in because it says recycle, it says store drop off. And she goes, oh, well, we don't recycle those. We just throw them away. And I'm like, well, it says store drop off. She's like, oh, here, I'll handle it. She she stuffed it right into the trash right in front of me. So thank you, Amazon, for being completely eco-friendly. I, I, again, maybe she didn't know, but when I'm standing at, you're, you're in, inside of an eco-friendly grocery store and someone is telling you, okay, it says here on it that I can store drop this off. Don't stuff it in the trash right in front of my face. I, 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 I was probably rude, but I made her fish it back out and give it back to me and I still have it. So I, I'm, I've, I've been meaning to email Amazon to ask them about that. Like, okay, where can I go where you'll actually at least lie to my face and tell me that you're recycling this. But it's all plastic, so I don't know if it could go into the, 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 the plastic bag bin. That's something that I'm gonna be looking at as I get close to Earth Day as well. It's my personal mission now. So, and I know they're trying and I know it's hard because a lot of number four plastics are very difficult to recycle too. Now, one other thing is if, of course, you know, using a cardboard box would really be the best way. Um, the other thing is instead of styrofoam peanuts, because styrofoam peanuts and plastic wrap is not the only um, stuffing that you can use inside of a box, and this is really good news, um, you can use paper to, to crate things. And I, I've seen it done very, very well. 
Um, first off, you can just take regular, you know, um, you know, packing paper and crumple it up, and that makes a good, you know, customizable, you know, uh, way to to edge out the corners. And it transports really well, guys. I feel like it works better than bubble wrap anyway. Um, the other thing is I've seen I've seen kind of that stiffer paper that has like little cutouts in it that make it a little bit more flexible. I've seen that type um, with my lavender set. Um, it was a bunch of shredded paper, and um, you know just like styrofoam peanuts, they get, it gets everywhere. I, I was finding little pieces of shredded paper, but it is nice. You can use that to create when you're packing a box. You can fill out the corners. Um, the last thing that I've kind of seen is that you can, um, and this is something new too, um, this is my one half for 2024, I would really, um, you know, I, I like to scrapbook, and I know that's not the most eco-friendly ho hobby, but sometimes I have leftover pictures. I always try to only order the pictures that I'm going to use, but if I do have leftover pictures, instead of keeping boxes upon boxes of it, you can shred if you have a shredder or you can go to a shredder service and shred pictures and that becomes very, you know, that becomes like packing, you know, um, material, fiber, right? And um, I, one other thing is I am gonna be contacting, that's one of my goals for this year for my eco you know, journey is, I am gonna be contacting Shutter, uh, Shutterfly and asking them, I believe that their paper, um, that I wanted to know more about their printing process and apparently it is a lot less chemically based than in the past. Usually, you know, if you, if you, first off, if you're shredding pictures that are from the 60s or 70s, that is something made using tip, typical, um, with the chemicals used to develop photos. Um, laser jet printing has come a long way and modern photos really are more just like printed pictures, like pictures that you would get out of your laser jet printer and they might very well be recyclable. So, you know, I'm just thinking, you know, from a perspective of if I've got a bunch of pictures that I'm not using, if I shred them, no one's going to be able to see what the pictures are of. They would just be little lines of paper and they can be used as packing material. And since all of this is getting thrown away anyway, you know, it's like what would be best for the environment and then how biodegradable they are I have to find out because I think modern day pictures are not of the same chemical content as old pictures so don't shred any old pictures if it's anything from 2000 or beyond I think they are the new printing process but that does make for a good packing material um, in addition to shredding you know if you have one of those shredder machines you can shred paper you can that's another thing to use excess paper instead of recycling it you could shred it and use it as packing materials so you know these are just ways that you can make it a little bit better and again, anytime I get a box, and I get a lot of those bubble mailers, I feel like those bubble mailers are the biggest problem. Um, but, you know, that's, you know, we're, you know, the, the other thing is, you know, when it comes to mailing, you know, try not to order so much online. If you're really looking at something online, don't, don't do that thing where you say, oh, I'll order all three colors and I'll return what I don't want. Let's get away from that because 6.5 billion uh, returns, guys, you know, when you think of the problem, it's not, the problem is not with the sellers, the problem is with us, right, you know, our consumer habits are getting out of hand, it's causing a lot of trash, it's causing secondary liquidation, you know, industry, um, you know, you see TikTokers who are buying pallets of liquidation, you'll see that in the videos below, it's becoming a thing. But to be honest, why are we creating things we don't use, using resources that we don't have much of just to either throw it away and then have all this leftover shipping and packaging crap? <laughs> so, you know, the best, the best process is, you know, let's, let's try to lean back into brick and mortar. Let's try to lean back into natural fibers. Let's buy secondhand. Let's try not to encourage the need for this, this stuff. And that'll save us carbon. It'll save us resources and landfills are a big deal guys that's going to be a very very big problem in the future we can't we can't fill them up now with crap that we bought on a whim but 
Yeah, so I hope this helps. Again, you know, it's it's the time of year where you're going to be, we're going to be swimming in all of this packaging material. Believe me, I have a, I have a gigantic box full of bubble mailers and I just, I need to find a way that they can be recycled. And unfortunately, TerraCycle won't take them. I don't know if UPS will. And then just moving forward, I do hope that we see more of this green packaging and that we find creative ways if we need to send, send something that we do it sustainably. So reuse, you know, use up, don't, don't buy, don't return. <laughs> And let's see if those are the ways that we can help help the planet. But I thank you so much for joining me, guys. I hope you had a good time. I will be back in two weeks. We're going to do the Valentine episode. And um, we're going to make that more of a fashion one. We're going to get back into the fashion realm. And um, I have a beautiful... Uh, uh, I have a beautiful custom dress that was made of, of upcycled material that I'm going to share with you and I'm very excited. I can't wait to film that video. But I hope you have a good couple weeks in the meantime and I'll see you then. Bye.